And the okay. first thing I did was my wife and I decided we were going to go through it. Well, that we had to. They wanted us to. Fluorescent lights. These are all reference That's... books. Did this used to be a baggage car or what? It used to be. I think I okay. think it was an RPO, to be honest with you. What's RPO mean? Railway post office. Post office. Okay. Yeah. I never worked on a railroad, so I don't know all these big words. A railway yeah. post office, because <laughs> what they did was, when the railroads uh, handled the mail, they had to, and there's one down in Sacramento, California, at the Sacramento State Rail Museum in the old Sacramento. Oh, oh, I stopped there. And, and they have the, the Great North. Northern one, and it's got little boxes for every town that mail might have went to okay. that was on both the Great Northern Railroad and their subsidiary lines. Like my okay. hometown is a little town south here called Lamont, uh -huh. where I used to live. We have a farm there still, but there was a little, even there was a box, but this big where the, as they'd go down the rails, the postmen on board would sort the mail into the boxes that would be mm. going. And they even had a thing that sometimes the train wouldn't stop at a station to pick up the mail. They had a hook that came out and they'd, right. put, a, they'd put a big ba canvas bag full of the mail and the train would come along. The RPO guy would put this hook out and he'd catch the mail. They'd reel it in. What if he misses? <laughs> well, it, Go it, back it and do it. It was pretty efficiently. Yeah. It was done pretty efficiently. But yeah. Okay. This is the back of the car back here. This is where the... Oh, this is the same car? Oh, yeah. It's all the same car. Most rail cars were about 85 feet long. 85? Okay. I knew it was longer than 40. Yeah, this is... A lot of times the baggages were 80 foot, but... I know some some of them have three axles at each end instead of well, two. Well, okay. That's the heavyweight cars. Like heavyweight. The one that's inside is a heavyweight. Okay. The, the ones that have two axles were the lightweight, and they were usually made out of steel and aluminum, oh, okay. like the coach over here mm -hmm. and the uh, pass, the sleeper and the Mount St. Helens. Those are lightweight cars, and, okay. and so they had they had four trucks. So what, what were the heavy light, heavyweight ones made of? Iron. Steel. Iron. Oh, okay. They were real heavy. Okay. That's one of the reasons they switched to the aluminum was because they were costing them too much to operate. Right. You know, it's just kind of a lot of this stuff. But... Some of this stuff is donated stuff, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're just trying to get through it. And, and are you like what are these? Are these maps or what? Some of them are blueprints. Some of them are calendars. <laughs> calendars. Uh, I was talking are, about the round thing. Yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, okay. Some of them are just some of this stuff are just photos and diagrams. Let's see, this says NP blueprint painting lettering G and U at wow. DE twenty five C. So. This would be a blueprint. Now, what are these are going to go? The archives for the MP and stuff, which is located in both Minneapolis and Burien, they want to come over and they want to digitize all this. Oh, that makes sense. You can put it online. People can yeah, look at it. Anybody can look at it. Because paper will eventually, you know. Yeah, it's going to rot. The ants will eat it or something. <laughs> like I, I collect railroad stuff yeah. in China. And I, I don't have room to collect anything. I just look around. Well, yeah. it's fun to do. Yeah. I know I do it too. Yeah. Steam loco. Yeah, no, I. If you came clear from Salem, Oregon, I've been down there a few times when my son played baseball at Whitworth. Yeah. yeah luckily, I get to go to the Oregon um, Rail Heritage Center whenever I want. Just last yeah. Saturday, I went there and they ran a steam train back and forth three times. So. Which I got, one? Um, it was number two. I forgot. Pulson. Pulson number two. Okay. I th yeah, it only got there like last year, so it's a big deal. It's smaller than they also got 44, 49, you know, and then um, the SP and 700. But the 700, it's an E1 class SP and S built yeah. by Alco for the NP and the SP and S. Yeah, but it's nice to have a variety that they have three of them working uh, now. Now, the eight, the eight, the 700, as I understand, is having to be rebuilt right now. Oh, okay, they have to rebuild them every 2,000 hours, and right? To yeah, regulations, they have to tear them completely down, and they have to have an inspector watch them. Come in and look at it. Yeah, but that's the cool thing about having more than one locomotive. When one's being torn apart, the other yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah, when I went through the museum, they actually, you, you know, the drive wheels they have that big, um, the the metal part that holds them all together. Yeah, that was completely off. It was laying yeah, down on the, the yeah, floor. The, the concentrics. Concentrics. Yeah, that was really cool yeah, to that's, see that. They gotta, that's that's got to be the timing on that's got to be perfect. Right. This this shelf will be sort of torn apart. Mm -hmm. It's Particle board? <laughs> well, no, it's too big. You could probably sell it. Some well, people might. Well, might use okay. it in the other part of the museum. It's, oh, yeah, yeah. It's just, this was right in the middle. And so we had about this much to walk on oh, this side. Yeah, and yeah. this much on that side. Well, nobody could see the books. So Good point. To decide, and we, as you can see, we, people donate us books. We have books from every railroad you can believe. Right. There, there's brand new books from the SP. I see up in the, the visitor center, too. You know, got a lot for sale, too. Yeah, well, some Pick of these were going to go online for sale pretty soon because... Some of them are like Denver and Rio Grande, some of them are the Santa Fe. 
got some really nice books for all of them. Yeah. Most of our books are in good shape. Right. Some of them aren't, but, and those probably won't. Yeah. <laughs> but we put them on the eBay and stuff, and some of this stuff, yeah. I don't know. Make some money to yeah. rebuild. All right, I'm going to keep looking around. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Enjoy the rest of your time here. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that was educational. Great Northern number 60. Huh, not the best lighting here, but oh well. I like how this bone would okay, so he said these are the heavy cars with the three axles at each end, and then those are the lightweight cars with the two axles at each end. So the lightweight car. Well he wasn't specifically talking about box cars. See I didn't go in the box car. So I think he said this rail car was 83 feet long. Wow, that's good to know. <laughs> I'm not sure how long a regular box car is. It's longer than 40 feet. Maybe it's 60 feet. Okay, so here's the turntable in progress. He says, I don't know if you heard in the video earlier, the guy doing inventory of the books, he was saying that they do when they get the time and money to want to rebuild this thing, get it working, and put a roundhouse here, etc., etc. Roundhouses, big railroads don't really use them anymore, but for small railroads, they can be kind of convenient way to file away different things because you can pull them out in any order sort the order bigger railroads you know they just have a rail yard with a whole bunch of sightings so they can sort stuff back and forth much bigger scale roundhouse is good for like one locomotive at a time you know rail yard you can do mile long trains sort a whole bunch of cars dozens hundreds of cars so yeah so that's good this, this thing isn't built yet so I'm getting the before picture here because once this is built he says there's gonna be a, a there's a in the other building there's a diagram what it's gonna look like so there'd be a building here I probably wouldn't even be allowed here and if I did the building would be in the way so it says lots of no trespassing keep out signs it's kind of disappointing I would totally like to climb up on top of that thing but I'd also like to try to push it around in circles I'm really curious if I'm strong enough to do that <laughs> maybe Olympic event who can push the merry-go-round the fastest there are some gravel trails around here not really any paved walkways but of course we're allowed to go pretty much anywhere it's a bit of an obstacle course there's, you know, cross ties, all sorts of obstacles to fall over. Definitely watch where you're going. Okay, so there's a ladder up to that box car. I didn't get to go in there yet. Hopefully I can do that soon.